All right, Ethernet. What I have connected is down here. You just click on there, and the this is a USB to Ethernet adapter, plugged into USB, obviously. And then just the end of it's plugged into the Nano, and then the Nano is being powered with the ENC 28J60 module. So if you do that, and as long as the network is actually plugged in and powered, it will show up. And this is now saying identifying. So if you just click on there, that brings up the adapter. Here you can see your Wi-Fi and dial-up and all your network internet settings. Here's our hardwired. Now the when they normally come, they come in automatic DHCP, meaning it automatically finds an IP address. So we want to edit that, and we want to choose manual. And then IP version 4, turn that on. Now an IP address is a, kind of a bad name because think of like a telephone with an area code. You have a telephone number, you have 403, 780, you have all these different area codes. That is actually called the subnet part of the IP address. And the IP address is the rest of it, like the actual rest of the phone number. So if we put in 192.168.3.10, this part of it is actually the area code, and this part of it is the address. So what we want to do in our subnet prefix length we call that either 255, probably used to see in dot zero, but that doesn't work on this because oops, each of these is eight bits. And this then becomes your area code. And then this allows from zero to 255 addresses or phone numbers in this area code. So when we talk about subnet, we're talking about the area code. When we're talking about the IP address, we're actually talking about this number here. Now we set this to 255.255.0 because we only want 255 devices in our subnet. But there's a shortcut to doing this, and you just call it 24 bits. So that's, you know, 255 is 8 bits of 1s, so 8 plus 8 plus 8 is 24. Gateway, just make it the same. Dot three, dot one, and then go save. All right, now we'll run AgIO. And of course, networking isn't on. There's two ways to turn networking on. You can either go here and turn Ethernet settings on, or we can just click right on there, and up pops this new little window. And this is a loopback address for the Linux guys. They want to be able to change that. But we never have to worry about that. This is an NME-aided network. If you want to run like a, another module or a you know, pulse module or that sort of thing, and this is for the RAID app. So we just turn UDP on, and then now it's going to reboot because yeah, in order to turn UDP on, you have to start everything with UDP. And up pops our network. This is a VPN connection. This is my Wi-Fi dot one, and this is our little hardware that we put in, 192.168.3, our subnet, IP address of 10. Now if we click on here, up pops this new little window. Now here we can see the different uh, networks that are on this computer. If we click on all, and you can see there's a whole bunch of adapters in this computer, and it really just has Wi-Fi and the, the, uh, the network they've plugged in. But you can see there are down, down, down. And we really only want the ones that are actually talking. And this is our subnet there and our IP address. So 192.168.3.10 is the guy that we want to connect to. The super easy way is just right here and enter a new subnet address. You can see nothing's working, nothing's talking. You know, that he's set to dot .9. Um, it's, it's just all wrong. The easy, easy way is to go 192.168.3. Go OK, and then just set it. A little module reboot, there she is already up. And you're done. This little green light the same as this little green light, meaning that the steer module works. And that's it.
Now we're going to mess it up. So let's change this to 5 and then set it. Now it's going to reboot. Now our subnet for our modules and everything is set to dot .5, but we're in this area code, 192.168.3, is our connection to the computer. So big, no, no big surprise, it doesn't work. So we want to make sure our subnet is the same on our module and our um, computer. So we have a couple options. We can take, this is the subnet that is coming from our adapter. So we can take that and just fill it in if it shows up here and is actually talking to it. And then just hit set. And this will set the subnet for AgIO and the subnet for the module to line up with the subnet for the card. Pretty simple. Again, we can manually set it, set it incorrectly. But if any of these three don't align, it's going to tell you in red, no adapter for the subnet. So there's something wrong. The other option is we can go back to the card. Unidentified network and edit it. Edit it, edit it. Make our network card match. And voila. Reboots. And all works. Pretty slick. And also there's a serial monitor. And this can monitor any serial port. This is just like the serial monitor in in like the Arduino IDE, that sort of thing. So you would just connect. Uh, since I'm connected, I'm powering my little nano with the USB port. I can go connect to 38400 and then disconnect. And then this is what it does. It reboots, tells me what my IP address is. And then it just keeps, every time that this scans the modules, it spits out a little bit of information. What my adapter IP is, meaning what's what's this adapter here on the in the computer, what the module IP is, same as that one there, what my current sensor reading is. And if I turn that, I just have a little pot connected to E0. And now it's a different number, now it's 77. And what my steer counts are, and the switch byte. If I move a switch, that should change to 5, 3, 0, whatever. So it just gives you a little bit of information. That doesn't work yet on the Teensy, but they're working on it. If you disconnect that, the other option, you now I just turn on a simulator for GPS, which is this little guy, because I'm not outside. And sending a GPS, if you turn that stuff off, you can log. And this is the NMEA coming into AgIO. So it's kind of a handy little serial monitor to do a lot of things. You can have them both on if you want. There now it's bringing in the scan information and the logging information. If you want to save that, save whatever has been spit up here on the screen, you can save it. You can start all over. You can delete it all. So a bit handy. And that's just right here in the serial monitor. That's the serial monitor. There's Ethernet settings. So enough of that. The other thing you can do is go straight to Device Manager. And that's this guy here. Double click on him. This is the old school way of doing it. Properties. Not quite as convenient, especially for touch screen. Internet protocol version 4. And here's our IP information. So here's that 255, 255, 255. There's our area code that we want to set to be our subnet. And then all the numbers, meaning there's no blocking for numbers 0 to 255. And then our gateway. So again, if we change this to three and go OK, OK, close and get rid of that right away, you can see that doesn't work. But we know that our adapter subnets dot three, fill it in, hit set. And everybody's happy again. GPS doesn't have a, an IP address because it's just a simulator dumping it onto the, onto the network. That's the beauty of UDP. You can have anything, anywhere, anytime, as long as the numbers are right and as long as the numbers are all the same. As long as the subnet is 
everybody's in the same area code, then you can phone anybody in your region, no problem. But as soon as you move out of that area code, well, and you try to dial the same number, you're going to get the wrong person. And that's exactly what happens in networking, is if you're talking to the wrong area code and the wrong subnet, then it isn't going to work. So I hope this, uh, hope this video is helpful on UDP and networking.